November 13, 1968, Sparring Line Promo. Uh, this week on Sparring Line, my guest is Mr. Eldridge Cleaver, and the subject for discussion is the Black Panther movement. Uh, please tune in if you can. November 13th, 1968, Firing Line, Cleaver. I'm Lawrence Tickering, and I will serve as chairman of this discussion between Mr. Buckley and Mr. Eldridge Cleaver. The topic of tonight's discussion is the Black Panther movement. Mr. Buckley will introduce his guest. <coughs> Eldridge Cleaver is the information minister of the Black Panthers and presidential candidate a while ago on the Peace and Freedom Party. Mr. Cleaver is extremely popular among the extremely dissatisfied in America. And although he makes much of the fact of his blackness, in fact, he has apparently much more support among the satisfied American whites than blacks. And no doubt Mr. Cleaver will in due course explain why this should be so. He grew up in Arizona and California. In due course and after much deliberation, he chose criminal vocations, first as a trader in marijuana, for which he was arrested and served time as a juvenile delinquent, and then when he was a little older as a rapist, specializing in white victims. He was caught and sent to jail on a 14-year sentence of which he has served nine years before getting bail. While in jail, he educated himself and wrote the bestseller, Soul on Ice, which is a catechism of sorts on Mr. Cleaver's personal ideology, which he defends most militantly as a black panther outspokenly engaged in revolutionary activity, the purpose of which is to change the face of America. I should like to begin by asking Mr. Cleaver whether he finds it consistent with his ideology to encourage the assassination of Mr. Richard Nixon. Uh, and he is the Richard chief pig, isn't he? Nixon. Uh, Richard Nixon is, at this moment, uh, the pig waiting in the wings to take the place of the other pig that's on his way out. Uh -huh. um, I would say that if Richard Nixon was assassinated, um, it would only result in having another pig in line uh, who possibly would need to be assassinated. If anyone wanted to assassinate Richard Nixon, I wouldn't do anything to stop him. Uh, not on camera, but maybe behind closed doors where I wouldn't be prosecuted for it. Uh, perhaps I would encourage that. I don't see any reason for having Richard Nixon alive today. Now, um, that, that being your point of view, does it... Um, sometimes surprise you that uh, that you are given your liberty I and mean, granted you've been in jail a whole lot but does it surprise you that you should be out of jail uh, at all especially no, when you consider this country doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me at all that i should be out of jail because uh, i was sent to jail i was convicted and sentenced to jail and i served my time and that's what the law requires so i'm out and i don't see any reason why i should be back well, but you have described ours as an unjust society, which uh, has no respect at all for the rights of its enemies, and you have just said uh, that you would uh, uh, perhaps be grateful to anybody who assassinated the President of the United States. Now, under the circumstances, aren't you surprised that a society permits you to say that, especially one which you say is unjust? Well, this society permits uh, a lot of people to say all kinds of things, you see? Mm -hmm. so I'm not surprised about that. No. Well. 
But maybe nothing at all surprises you about our society. Is that the idea? Uh, there are a few things that surprise me. There are a few uh, people in this country uh, who show an undue, I should say, a great um, a courage and a great ability to struggle against uh, what seems to be overwhelming odds. And this surprises me that people have the courage uh, to confront uh, this criminal society and then move to destroy it. Mm -hmm. Well, would you be surprised if the society showed enough courage to lock you up and keep you locked up for so long as you were, in effect, encouraging the assassination of a public official? Uh, in the first place, you see, you're the one that posed the question uh, in that particular manner, and I was just uh, responding to that. Um, but later for the society, uh, later for its ability to lock me up, it's been trying to reincarcerate me ever since I've been out. Uh, they didn't let me out because they wanted to. They let me out because a lot of pressure was brought to bear. And at that time, uh, they thought it would be the best thing to do. And since I've been out and gotten involved in the movement, uh, they've been trying to put me back in jail so that uh, I'm not surprised at anything that they do. All right, well, let, let's, let's subtract the question of what surprises you and what doesn't, since this seems to be an unprofitable line of inquiry. Definitely. But, uh, I, I, uh, but, but let me say that I'm surprised that you should be surprised that I should bring these subjects up, because it isn't every day that you have a guest on your program who says such things as, as you say and, and, and reiterate. You're quoted as having said to the Barristers Club at San Francisco, quote, I hope you will take your guns and shoot judges and police. The Washington Post, which is a liberal newspaper, uh, describing the Black Panther newspaper as uh, published uh, in uh, here just uh, a month or so after the assassination of Bobby Kennedy, which ran a drawing of Kennedy as a dead pig, photos of his Negro bodyguard described uh, as, quote, LBJ bootlickers, and a flattering portrait of Sihan Sihan. Now, it doesn't surprise you that this should attract public notice, does it? No, because when we put, publish our paper, uh, we hope that it will attract public notice. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the reason we first put the paper out in the first place is because we knew that people were interested in that. Yeah. So we're not surprised that uh, that's true. Well, what, should, what, what in the ideal society are the consequences, or ought to be the consequences, of such an attitude as, as, as you take? Well, in an ideal society, uh, my attitude would be unnecessary. Uh, an ideal society, I suppose... Where all the pigs uh, would be dead. All the pigs would uh, be extinct. Yeah. Uh, people would no longer, people would no longer be uh, in a position to function in a pig-like manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the ideal society is really one uh, in which your uh, ideals are, are dominate, even uh, if I, it I requires that, uh, the, the I don't extinction. think that would be accurate. Mm -hmm. I think that an ideal society would be one in which all people uh, would have a chance to bring their ideas to bear on the social process yeah. and not to be subjected to the dictation of any particular person or any particular clique of people. But now, as I understand it, um, y you have been rather impatient with people who fancy themselves as, as struggling to uh, help the cause of the black people. I see that you recently said about Julian Bond that, quote, he is becoming a pig and might just end up being barbecued, barbecued with the rest of the pigs. Suppose we start by discussing what it is about Julian Bond that makes you call him a pig. Well, it's, it's like this. Let me say this. Um, there are always political differences uh, within any group or within any particular spectrum of the political scene. Uh, just as you yourself uh, uh, attack people and uh, cut them up in your magazine and in your program, uh, this is uh, legitimate also in our part of the spectrum. Uh, the things that we feel are constructive, <laughs> Uh, there are uh, tactics and uh, approaches that we feel are detrimental to the cause. Uh, we feel that Julian Bond, as a member of the Democratic Party, is part and parcel of the machinery of oppression. Uh, we feel that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are criminal conspiracies against the people. And we feel that anyone who affiliates with them, supports them, speaks good about them, uh, writes good about them, uh, aids and abetting this uh, criminality. Yeah. Now. Uh, how, how would you uh, agree to test your position? That is to say, is there any test to which you would be willing to submit it on the basis of which you might conclude that you were mistaken 
for instance, I'm not, I'm not concerned about any laboratory tests. Uh, my position is being tested uh, daily uh, in the real world, and that's all I'm concerned about uh, where the action is. It's being tested on the University of California campus. It's being tested um, in the black communities throughout this country. And it's not uh, my individual uh, position. It's the position of the Black Panther Party. And my position, the Black Panther Party position, one and the same. Yeah, now, yes, I, I understand that. The question I'm raising is, if you say that um, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are engaged in criminal conspiracies to deny you and, and how many Black Panthers are there? Uh, two, three hundred? Four or five. Four or five, yeah. To deny them their, their rights, would you be willing to change your position uh, if an election were held, the result of which was a very substantial repudiation of your views by the people who engaged in this conspiracy. Notice how, how, can you ever, how can we ever find out whether you're right or wrong, or, or is it simply a religious feeling that you have, which is not it's susceptible to... The same way that we find out uh, whether uh, the John Birch Society, or the Minutemen, or the mad right wing of the Republican Party is right or wrong. Uh, we see uh, who will be victorious in the end. When, when is the end? You're talking uh, about a millennium uh, from now? If the Black Panther Party uh, is totally repudiated by the community and it becomes extinct, then we will say that there was nothing in the community to nurture its growth. And the same thing would apply to any other particular uh, political tendency. At I the present time, the Black Panther Party is growing. Uh, we have branches uh, all over the country, and we feel that uh, we have more work than we could possibly do and for the foreseeable future, it looks like it's going to be more of that. Mm -hmm. I see. So th therefore, you would concede that uh, if the Black Panther movement did not grow, this would mean that it was mistaken in its premises? Well, I'm saying that if uh, the Black Panther Party, having had its program aired in the community, um, ceased to exist, uh, this would indicate to me that the people were not willing to support it. Yes, but... The fact that people aren't willing to support it doesn't mean that it's not a good idea, does it? Or, or, or are you making that act of faith in the democratic idea process? In the sense, see, uh, a good political idea, uh, I would say, would be one uh, that was functional and one that could uh, help the people and that the people would relate to and the people would help to spread it and become part of it. Uh, good, a good political idea in a book somewhere on some shelf would seem to me to be non-functional. I'm anxious, Mr. Cleaver, for you to uh, uh, elaborate on your ideas. And uh, suppose that Julian Bond were in the room at this moment, wouldn't he in all likelihood say, but don't you understand, I am working within the Democratic Party. I have a considerable leverage within the Democratic Party. Uh, I have addressed as many as 50 million people at one time via the Democratic Party. What's wrong with that? How would you reply to him? Well, if he would say that, uh, what I would do is talk about the Democratic Party, uh, its the various uh, units, uh, its, um, its history, and the fact that it's one of the chief instruments of oppression of the people. Uh, the Democratic Party is a national entity. Uh, it's composed of local units. It's infested with uh, vicious racists, uh, people who disenfranchise black people, who manipulate the political process, and who are in fact in power um, because they have usurped the political process. And uh, the local units, you may have a unit in some part of the country that is not involved in any oppression of black people because there are no black people in that particular area. But they add their strength to the national organization, and this means essentially that they will be adding their strength uh, to the races uh, from both the North and the South who are actively involved and perpetrating laws <coughs> that oppress the people and practices that oppress the people and carrying out uh, criminal wars of genocide against uh, the Vietnamese people and constituting the bulwark of imperialism and oppression all over the world. So that I don't think that Julian Bond would be justified in uh, supporting that and uh, he wouldn't have very much to say to me because he knows I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, how about Dick Gregory? Is he a pig too? Dick Gregory, uh, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's well, a he, comedian. He, yeah, but he's, <laughs> yeah, but he's very enthusiastic about Julian Bond. Is he nevertheless all right? Dick Gregory's all right with me. Uh huh. Well, now he's very much against the war. So is Julian Bond against the war. Now, Dick Gregory ran for mayor of Chicago a couple of years ago. Do you think well, he should not have run? He hmm? ran for something in uh, New York. Did you run for the mayor? Yeah. Same bag. Yeah. A lot of pigs beat me. <laughs> Some pigs run faster than others. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, was Dick Gregory mistaken uh, in attempting to... Uh, uh, attempting to, uh, oh, what is this term you use, usurping the political process? What does that mean? That means that um, there's supposed to be uh, representative democracy in this country uh, designed and calculated so that everyone in this country can have his will uh, involved in all decisions in that process. And that the, there's gerrymandering going on in this country, uh, there's intimidation of people. There's an outright murder of people who have attempted to uh, express uh, the will of black people. And uh, as far as that's what it means to me, people who have illegally and uh, against the interests of their constituents uh, move to manipulate the political process for their own interests. But you see, the, the, the trouble with your analysis is that you are always attempting to define the interests of the constituency instead of letting the constituency do it for itself. Well, see, In uh, point of fact, Dick Gregory was... You see? Well, yes, but you're, and, you're uh, only one part of it, aren't you? One part of it. Other and, people uh, count, too. Uh, there's no one who can say that any individual doesn't have the right uh, to uh, speak out and offer any definition that he's capable of coming up with. And this is one of the things that I'm very much opposed to, that the power structure, the pigs of the power structure, uh, seek to eliminate various uh, people from the political process uh, through various means, uh, make them believe that they have no right uh, to participate in it or to speak out or to define issues as they see them. I say that a wino stumbling down the street to Sacramento in front of the Capitol has just as much right as you or Richard Milhouse Nixon to express his political opinions and to offer definitions. So what? I mean, you're saying, so who's disputing uh, that? You just got to see. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. You just got to saying that I'm one individual, and therefore there's something wrong with me offering these definitions. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that you don't seem to be willing to grant precisely that freedom which you theoretically cherish for people to decide their own political future. When Dick Gregory ran for mayor of New York, two percent of the black community there voted for him. Ninety-eight percent voted for another candidate. Now, wouldn't this suggest a rather overwhelming repudiation of the point of view of Dick Gregory by people he nevertheless understands himself to be serving? It indicates to me that uh, the people who did participate in that election uh, are in vast uh, need of some political education. Yeah, that's what I thought you'd get around saying. In other words, people will be voting correctly when they vote as you tell them to or as you educate as them to. When they, when they begin to vote in their own interest, when they vote yeah. in such a manner as, as to destroy, as to destroy Dawson's machine uh, in Chicago, and to destroy Daly's machine in Chicago, uh, then they will be functioning in their best interest because Dawson and Daly are part and parcel of the oppression that those people are suffering. So as long as they support uh, Dawson in office and Daly in office, I can't say that they're uh, functioning in a politically wise manner. No. Uh, uh, again. Let's, let's, however, understand the consequences of what you have said, which is that until people get around to voting in their interest as defined by you, uh, they are voting wrongly and are, quote, usurping the political process. I think it's important we say that because uh, I, I have I found it in your I think it's important we make a distinction uh, because it's not a case of me standing up and uh, making definitions and calling on everyone else to coincide with my definitions. This is a matter of a tradition of uh, struggle against a system of oppression. It's a matter of a heritage and perpetuating a heritage of struggle. And there is some consensus involved in that. And it's not contributed by any one particular person. Well, no, uh, I suppose uh, you admit a few people into your deliberations. But nevertheless, uh, they, they continue to be a very, very small minority. And I therefore must stand by my point which is a sort of that, that there is the Marcusean edge to your thought that people don't vote for their own best interests because they are constantly deceived 
and that only revolutionary experience will cause them. I don't think there's any doubt that people are deceived. deceived. You have uh, the pigs of the mass media who manipulate uh, information. Uh, uh, they distort uh, statistics. They distort uh, reports. Uh, essentially, they distort reality so that people have their heads filled with uh, lying and vicious propaganda, and they're in no position to really function in a realistic manner. Well, now, why, why, uh, why are you uniquely uh, situated to have penetrated to this great national delusion? Why isn't uh, Julian Bond as bright uh, as you and as morally concerned as you and as penetrating as you? Well, what happened to Bond that corrupted yeah, his I'm vision? I'm not making any uh, of the claim that you're attributing to me. Well, there must but, be uh, some, some reason for your uh, vision, isn't there? I don't claim to have any vision, see? Well, but I, you do. Wait a minute. This is what you're saying. So yeah. if you're saying this, it means you've made the assessment, so you tell me what you see in me that makes you well, draw that conclusion. Well, I've, I read your book, and I see how you handle people who disagree with you. They're pigs, they're murderers, they're Nazi-like, they're, they're, they're everything. All people who disagree with me uh, don't fall in that category. I have disagreements no, but everybody with people to within uh, the Black Panther Party, and I don't call them pigs. I just say that they're mistaken, or I disagree with them. All right. But the, we define the pigs as those who are actively involved in the machinery of oppression. Three categories of evil, avaricious businessmen, demagogic politicians, and the racist pig cops. These are the pigs of the power structure. Mm -hmm. And Julian Bond wouldn't fall in that particular category. Uh, he would fall in the category of all the other black Democrats who are involved in that. Uh, they're lackeys from the colonies uh, helping the uh, oppressors from the mother country carry out their oppression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, would you, uh, would you uh, argue that, that any uh, effort of the kind made by, oh, say, uh, Whitney Young or Julian Bond or Martin Luther King or anybody to affect a reconciliation between the races uh, is a, a waste of time or is it also another enterprise in corruption because it retards the true uh, revolutionary posture that you're seeking I, I to cultivate. I think that uh, essentially what it does is it helps to create uh, a blind and violent situation. In fact, it has helped to create the situation that we're in today because uh, these men uh, go behind closed doors uh, with the businessmen and the politicians of the power structure and they propose certain uh, programs and they force these programs off as being capable of silencing the dissent in the black community. And they don't work. And so that when the people uh, move to rebel, uh, it's directly a result of the uh, failure of leadership to offer valid solutions. Well, Martin Luther King uh, uh, advocated three specific pieces of national legislation, all of which were enacted into law. So if he were here, why didn't he say that, in fact, his agitation did help? Well, he was here, you see, and he, he was agitating, and he had a particular approach uh, to the situation, namely nonviolence, and uh, he died by violence at the hands of an assassin, you see, uh, someone who opposed this program very actively. Did you, did you publish a pretty fied picture of his assassin as well as the assassin of Bobby Kennedy? Uh, what kind of picture? Pretty fied. No, we, didn't publish, we didn't publish a pretty fied uh, picture of uh, Martin Luther Flat King. Uh, we don't consider Martin Luther King to be uh, one of the uh, pigs of the power structure. He was moving against the power structure in a manner that we feel was not calculated to bring the power structure down. Why? Well, because uh, essentially it helped to strengthen the power structure. Why? Because it functioned uh, within the channels that the power structure can deal with. Uh, in other words, uh, anything that doesn't actually require a dissolution of the power structure is simply a form of perpetuation of tyranny? Well, it's uh, helping it to function because uh, Martin Luther King, uh, when he first started his uh, nonviolent tactics, uh, they were new to the American scene. Uh, and because they were new, the pigs didn't really know how to deal with them so that uh, some gains could be made. But after uh, repetition of this process over the months and over the years, uh, the pigs had programmed it so that they were perfectly capable of containing it and limiting its effect. For instance, where? Uh, where? All over the South. Uh, Can you give me an example? York. Pardon? Can you give me an example? Well, we could uh, give you an example of the uh, Poor People's Campaign. 
Poor People's March in Washington. It was a total failure. Uh, it didn't bring down the power structure, and it resulted in a humiliating uh, defeat for his forces, you see. No, but the Poor People's Campaign was not similar to the, uh, to, to the techniques used in Montgomery, Alabama successfully. Yes, but it was the same uh, principle involved. The masses of people uh, moving uh, against the system, but moving nonviolently, and led by a Pied Piper who would sing uh, sweet songs to the mother country. That's all. Mr. Cleaver, uh, I know uh, some leaders of the uh, Negro movement who believe that you have uh, set that movement back more than any man in the last 10 years uh, as a result precisely of feeding stereotypes of which white racists in fact do uh, encourage. That is to say that your particular virulent brand of hate everybody is encouraging people who may be looking for the excuse to think of you as typical of their race. Uh, and they are most anxious, uh, and in fact, in one particular case, uh, uh, most anxious that uh, they be dissociated uh, uh, from you. Now, do you automatically uh, assume that uh, they are mouthing sentiment of that kind simply to ingratiate themselves with the power establishment? Well, or do you credit uh, their sincerity? Knowing, knowing uh, what you represent, you see, Knowing what uh, point you represent on the political spectrum, uh, if you have some Negro friends uh, in the movement, Negro leaders who are your friends, uh, then I could understand why they would be hostile to me. Because, uh, uh, well, Dick Gregory's a friend of mine. The Negro, see, the Negro movement, uh, they say that I was set it back 10 years. Uh, it's my desire to eliminate it totally because uh, I'm involved in the movement of black people. Uh, who repudiate everything about this system because it has been oppressing them. And anyone who uh, would sit down and criticize that and call themselves the leaders of the Negro movement and confide to you that uh, I'm doing all these bad things, well, uh, I couldn't have any beef with them at all. Later no, I, I, sh I shouldn't think that um, it would and be I'm logical sure if you would, but Gregory I said, you, I said you, you, no, no, Dick Gregory did not tell me that. Can you I name said he's a friend of mine. Yeah. Who are the Negro leaders uh, who told you that? I'd like uh, to talk to them about that. Uh, you might barbecue them, so I certainly won't <laughs> release their name. Uh, the, uh, the, the, I, I didn't ask you to assess their evaluation. I, I know that ahead of time. I'm asking you whether you doubt their sincerity. I doubt their existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. But then it, it makes it much easier to see how, how you come by your data if you doubt the existence of Negro leaders who despise you. Because, uh, in fact, they abound. Negro leaders me Certainly. and uh, bring their they, well, any, uh, anybody, opinions to you. you and any, well, anybody who, uh, uh, anybody who believes that uh, rights ought to be held by, had by everyone, even people who disagree with you, would have to despise your, your position. Uh, anybody who, for instance, thought that... Uh, uh, an appropriate thing to do after Bobby Kennedy was assassinated was not to run a picture of him looking like a pig would despise you. And that makes quite a lot of people, you know. Bobby Kennedy had a considerable uh, following in this country. Bobby Kennedy was a pig, you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy was uh, part and parcel of the machinery of oppression of this country. And simply because he was assassinated, it doesn't change that. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you say you have four or five um, a hundred panthers which would suggest that your movement, even though you believe it to be an incandescent you one. You said four or five hundred. Oh, I said two or three hundred. You said four or five hundred a moment ago. No, there's one, two, three. There's still four or five individuals. Have you got a quorum? Is that a quorum? <laughs> I think we can hold our quorum down. The, 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 my, my question was, uh, uh, is, is it likely uh, that a year from now, or isn't it likely that a year from now, uh, your, your movement will simply become one of those uh, blips in footnotes of history books about the length to which California is prepared to go. Aren't you, in fact, a creature <laughs> of the University of California? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that's likely. 
Well, yeah. this is what this is what brought you to a lot of people's attention. The fact that you feature in a power contest between the regents and the student body. No, I was trying to the first part of your question. You said, isn't it likely that a year from now we become one of these bleeps in the footnotes? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, that's not true. I don't think that's likely. Well, it is. It surely is likely, if only because the logic of your own analysis is that America, which is, quote, a Nazi country, uh, will move ruthlessly against anybody that that really and truly challenges it, right? That doesn't under, mean under that the it will be successful in, yeah. in destroying uh, all the people who move against it, because uh, there are millions and millions of people a whole nation of people all around the world. But they all vote uh, for Mayor Daley. We just went, we just reversed that ground. The people that I'm talking about do not vote for Mayor Daley. And some of the people who voted for him this time around uh, might possibly be shooting at him next time around. Well, they voted for Julian Bond. Where, where are these million people hidden? I don't think they're hidden. See? Well, why don't, uh, why, some why don't... Some of them may be right out here, you know. Uh, yeah, we're talking about millions. all over this country. All no, I don't doubt it. One of these The millions together. and millions of black people in this country are becoming united, they're becoming unified, and they're not uh, worshiping at the shrine of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, and they're seeking an alternative, and there are people actively involved in preparing that alternative for them. And I think that it will be prepared, it will be presented, and it will be successful in joining with allied forces, both in the white community here and around the yeah, world, to destroy that's it. Yeah, that's an act of faith. I, I used to hear George Lincoln Rock well saying the kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, you probably heard a lot of people say things yeah. like that, you see. And most but, of them uh, have, 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 have mercifully passed yeah. from the from the scene, at, at least as, as uh, potent figures. But uh, the, 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 what, makes, what, what makes your own uh, uh, brand of, uh, uh, your own ideology, I suppose, especially interesting uh, is that you are obviously a very competent man. What makes you, what do you see in our ideology uh, that's so objectionable? You think it's wrong for uh, people to want to kill their oppressors? Well, I think that what's primarily uh, at fault with it uh, is that it fails to recognize, A, the human condition, B, how valiantly a lot of people work and have worked over a period not merely of months but of generations, back when you were raping people in order to try to affect the I didn't rape a generation. I raped for two or three months. Well, well mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Let's say perhaps some of your victims considered it as a generation. Uh, and that uh, th these people have been diligently working to try to construct a better order. Here you come with a blowtorch, uh, calling people like Bobby Kennedy and Julian Bond pigs. Uh, and it seems to me that to approach with that kind of rhetorical edge uh, a tender situation is to do it very obviously a spectacular disservice. Well, I think that that's incorrect. Um, people struggle, they contribute what they can, and when they can no longer cope with the situation, I don't think that uh, people are, are bound to uh, carry on their tactics just because they were active for all these years. Um, there have been all kinds of people coming in and offering uh, their efforts, and when they finish that, they pass from the scene, and that's all they have coming. Uh, they don't have uh, the right to expect other people to uh, stop the movement and not go forward simply because there's a need for a change of tactics. <laughs> no, I, there's always a need for a change of, uh, of tactics, or at least for refreshing oneself concerning the necessity of new tactics. For instance, in New York, there are a lot of people, I think, who nowadays uh, saying what only the right wing was saying a while ago, which is that the labor unions effectively block uh, black people from entering the construction trade union. There are those who are calling for black capitalism. There are those who have enough faith in the Negro people to subscribe to the doctrines of Nathan Glazer and Patrick Moynihan uh, that they must be given a chance to exercise black power. Now, all of that uh, is in motion, and many of these tactics are new, and many discoveries are being made which directly benefit people in very concrete ways, education, jobs, housing, medicine, and the rest of it. But you uh, simply want to reject the whole of it as a uh, as pig hypocrisy. Yeah, I think that uh, it is hypocrisy. Um, I don't see any prospect of the people who, on the one hand, are willing to drop bombs on the Vietnamese people who are struggling to control their country, 
and then coming here with their wars on poverty, uh, trying to turn black people into black capitalists, when in fact it's the capitalistic system itself that has to be destroyed because it is the mother of all this oppression. Uh, the same situation that your people found themselves in when they came here and that other ethnic groups have found themselves in, uh, we find ourselves in that position. Plus we find the descendants of uh, those ethnic groups that first came here now a part of the power structure and actively involved in oppressing us. And they've uh, united against us. They've closed the doors uh, to the melting pot against us. And so we can't do anything but step back. I don't understand what, why you say that. Because it seems to be because it's true. Because not the history case, shows that it's true. It seems to be clearly not the case. Uh, look at Julian Barr. Look, look at the daughter of Dean Rusk. Uh, well, look at Machine Gun uh, Kelly and uh, look at Al Capone. All right, well, what? And look at the Molly <laughs> Maguires. And look but, at Sacco and Vanzetti. Sure. And look at the Irish people when they came over here and what they had to go through at the hands of Anglo Saxons and how they had yeah, look, to struggle. Every, everybody has to go through everything. And how they had to struggle and they resorted to violence and uh, they moved up the power structure. And here you are now uh, yeah, talking about the They didn't, they didn't, do, so they, all that. They didn't well, do so by the use of violence. The what? Jewish people in New York did not use violence in order to assert themselves. No, they every didn't. ethnic group that uh, ever came here used violence. Well, this is a historical generality which can be said about everything, everybody. What That's has the true. Y structure done to impede progress in Liberia? Created Liberia. Well, but this is this is this this was the Black Power call of a hundred years ago, isn't it? This uh, Liberia is owned and controlled by Firestone, and we all know that. It's nothing but a plantation, and the people there are why the they committed it to the Liberians. Why they committed it? Yeah. Committed it for the same reason that I'm tolerating this shit right now because they have guns and they have planes and they have bombs and they force people and they find uh, bootlickers and Uncle Tom uh, to perpetuate their game. And the people don't uh, endorse it, and when they find a means of organizing against it, they're gonna run Firestone out of there and take control of that country. Well now, uh, how, how do you account for the workings of the power structure in the Soviet Union since that's not a capitalist society? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it is a capitalist society. Yes. That's, what, uh, that's what I read in uh, the capitalist press. They say that uh, they're cementing a uh, relationship with the Soviet Union. Uh, <coughs> the premier of uh, the Soviet Union uh, sent a message of congratulations to his racist pig, Nixon, when he was elected. Um, I would say that uh, they're chummy chummy and buddy buddy. And that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. question here from this hearing. Mr. Buckley, when you, um... A little louder, please. When you open with your address, you stated that, um, Eldridge Cleaver's following was consisted largely of, uh, that of dissatisfied whites. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know, uh, what led you to this conclusion? It would seem to me that you're saying that Eldridge is just possibly not a leader of black people. Oh, I say it emphatically. I don't think he's leader at all of black people. And why is that? Oh, because his notions are so absurd, that's why. And, and black people are not absurd. But it, uh, it, you know, it stands, you know, from looking at the black community that most people support what Eldridge Cleaver says. On the contrary. If you think that, you don't know anything. But I live uh, I, I in the black community. I gave you an example. I gave you an example of Dick aware. Gregory. I gave you an, as an example that Dick Gregory ran for mayor of New York and got, uh, or Chicago and got only two and a half to three percent of the Negro vote on a program far less virulent than Mr. Cleaver's. If he had went on that program, he probably wouldn't have gotten three votes. But that, uh, you're comparing the difference between two different people. Uh, Dick Gregory is one person and Eldridge Cleaver yes, is another. Yes, Dick Gregory has a much larger following than Mr. Cleaver. Well, see, sister, you have to realize this, that uh, it's been traditional. Uh, the white men have been able to tell us what's going on with us, and we don't mm -hmm. know. 
That's right. You don't know. <laughs> That's right. You sure don't know, and you're certainly proving it. But how do you, um, how can you make an assumption that we don't know when we are well, the people I, well, who live within that community? I read the press, and... Uh, but the press is not an accurate uh, account of what oh, goes now, on in the black community. Look, if I pick up a newspaper, the newspaper says, Mr. Cleaver addressed uh, a group of a thousand people today, of whom approximately 85% should I dispute that? What, what, what is the press trying to put over on me by saying that? Because obviously it's rather embarrassing to white people to have that many uh, people, a uh, person that elected Mr. Cleveland. I it don't would be like attending a Nazi rally. I don't think that, you know, that that's the issue because, like, how can you regard what uh, the press says as uh, completely true? I don't. But, I, but, but, then, I, I, but I you're basing your conclusion that uh, most of Mr. Cleveland's following is a dissatisfied one. No, because there is a correlation between internal plausibility and what the press says. If the press says, and what's more, Mr. Cleaver got the biggest hand when he set Buckley for president, I would doubt the press. But since there wasn't anything that outrageous said, I, I see no reason to suppose that that reporter has designs on my gullibility. Well, ha had it ever occurred to you that, uh, for instance, when Eldridge gives a speech somewhere, you take into to the account how many black people ca can come to those speeches. They are usually during working hours, and most black people just don't have time. They're too busy making their living to take off from work to go to hear his speeches. So therefore, what you have is a lot of white people who have that time, who can come and listen to elders. And they, that they would account of, for the large number of white listen. people had, in the audience. They had plenty of time to listen to Martin Luther King, to listen to Julian Bond, and listen to even Adam Clayton Powell doing it. So I think that's sort of a phony excuse. No, it's not. Because if you take into account Martin Luther King, most of his speeches were, giving, were given in churches at nighttime when people were off from work he and could come, all time. come to his speeches. Mr. Edwards, do you have a question? Well, yes. I think one thing... Uh, I'm afraid there's a, a fair amount of dis distortion going on. I'd like to ask Mr. Cleaver to talk about some of the gold of his, of the Panther movement. And since I, I assume, perhaps Mr. Cleaver won't agree, that there has to be some sort of structure in the long run, I would like to ask him what he envisions the structure to be uh, after the revolution. Well, if a uh, revolution would be successful in this country, uh, first of all, I would envision uh, a complete absence of the capitalistic uh, mode of doing things. I mean, the profit motive, uh, turning the resources of the earth into private property uh, so that individuals and cliques of individuals uh, can derive the benefit uh, from the production while the people who are really the backbone of production uh, come off short and uh, millions and millions of people are left completely out of the process altogether. We want to eliminate that system and for it substitute one that will be based on the principles of socialism uh, that would recognize the true condition of the planet that all of us come here the same way we come here naked. We don't come here uh, with uh, deeds of trust and uh, blue chip stock in our hands. We come here naked on an equal basis and we have therefore an equal right to access to all of the things that we need in order to survive on this planet. So that we want a system that recognizes that and that is structured in a manner that this can be produced and provided for the people. Is there any system in the world right now that you could point to uh, and say this is much more what we want? I think that uh, all of the countries that are moved into socialism that are trying to uh, construct a socialistic system are far superior in its essence uh, to this decadent system that we live under here. And I would, I would not exclude any of them, even the ones uh, who would compose uh, the right wing of the socialist movement around the world. I would say that they have at least taken a step to enact a uh, basic principle of socialism. And I would say that's better and far more acceptable than uh, this gangsterism that's going on here. Ms. McInerney? Yes, to get back to the uh, question of your following, Mr. Cleaver, in the white community, um, in your book, Soul and Ice, you mentioned that for the first time the black community could respect a group of white 
people, and this, this being the white student liberals, the, the upper middle class, middle class students who are rejecting their value structure, the ones they were brought up under. Now, is, is the respect that you're gaining from this community something that you are working for? Are you valuing it? Are you trying to build up a constituency of mere numbers? From I'm not trying group? to build up a constituency. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to work with people, uh, whoever they might be, who are sincerely interested and who show signs of breaking with the heritage of this country and who realize that uh, white supremacy, uh, the domination of white people over the other people of the world has come <laughs> to an end, that the people of the world are no longer going to accept it, and they're looking for ways of getting out of that. And when I see people who are struggling uh, to do a good job and to change things, uh, I have lean over backwards to work with them. And this is the reason that I participate in activities or make speeches in the white community, because I find that there are a great numbers of young white people uh, who feel about the situation the same way I feel. They want it to end, and uh, we're willing to talk to them and have a dialogue to try to come up with some solutions to this problem. Don't you really think that they're patronizing you, Mr. Cleveland? Because I really do. In, in other words, things are worse in one respect than you feel. You say you, they're of, patronizing me? Or yeah, patronizing they, no, they're patronizing well, you. Uh, they think, isn't here's it exciting? Here's a member of my class right here. Yeah. This is Debbie. Uh, there are a couple more members here, two or three or four or five back there. And um, I don't get the impression that either I'm patronizing them or that they're patronizing well, me. Well, I, I wasn't asking about your impression. I'm giving mine, which is I that they are patronizing you. you. Uh, sure, yeah. And, and the, re the reason they're patronizing you is because they think it's so daring uh, to get out and listen to somebody who speaks this kind of thing. I have no yeah, doubt at all. Uh, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? <laughs> see, I think that's an insult to the intelligence of these people. You see? Oh, no, as a matter of fact, a lot, a lot of intelligent people uh, 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 consider this simply a sensation. Uh, and they, 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 uh, I have absolutely no doubt that uh, when Hitler's following was no larger than yours, there were people who considered him a very considerable moral theorist. And I think that, uh, uh, and, and the more I people, your, your following, um, the people in the Republican Party uh, who uh, worship you and who read your disgusting magazine, uh, <laughs> the National Review. Um, I think that they're the ones who are alienated from reality. I read some of your stuff this morning, you know. And, uh, well, it's just, it seems to me that it's criminal. And uh, I think that uh, that's far more worse than rape. I think that you're raping the minds of the American people. And I think you're raping the future. And you're murdering the future. And uh, everything that the Republican Party is involved in, and everything in the National Review, I think uh, is detrimental to the people of this country. So this is music to my ears, Mr. Cleaver. There's nothing, no higher ambition I have than to be rep represent exactly the opposite of what you well, represent. I'm glad to be a servant. I think I've achieved it. I know you have. Sure. But I as have. I say, I do think that uh, you have a, a special brief against certain white liberals who do patronize you. They think, look, how uh, I'm associating with a great big live uh, radical. He calls Bobby Kennedy pig. We isn't that exciting? He called Bobby Kennedy, and he utters obscenities in front of two, three thousand people, and we isn't that exciting? There's a lot of childishness in it. Uh, I have no doubt that they will grow up, and I have no doubt that maybe you will too. But meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, <laughs> well, uh, let, 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 let's let's assume that that's a universal uh, uh, act of faith. Uh, yes, a universal act of uh, repudiation of what you're spouting now. No, no, I, no, I, I don't doubt. We're gonna cut that out. I, I, <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, you be sure and watch that and see how we cut that out, right? <laughs> oh, and all of the other eloquent things you said. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, we have another question here, Mr. Barry. Uh, Mr. Cleaver, getting uh, toward the, um, the Black Panther Party platform, um, it espouses in the, uh, in the final point, humanity, peace, freedom. Uh, point four states all black men should be exempt from the draft. Uh, I'm wondering if you would mind commenting on that, what yes, your rationale yes. behind that is. Uh, we feel that um, as a glaring contradiction involved in uh, black men responding to a call issued by a pig like General Hersey, who had the audacity to endorse uh, George Wallace for president, if you recall. Uh, General Hersey is I don't recall, as a matter of fact. Excuse me, can I ask the man's question? Yeah. Well, you said if you recall. <laughs> Do you recall that? I, I don't. I didn't anybody recall, recall that? that? I, yeah. 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 Well, because they were crooked. I was just instructed. Not <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. 
the National Review didn't support uh, George Wallace. <laughs> but uh, General Hersey, you see, is head of the Selective Service System. And he's the one who sends out these greetings to these young black brothers. And what I'm saying is this, that this country is a racist country. It's oppressing black people. And it's the enemy of black people, the system. And that black people should be here in this country fighting against this system and not over in Vietnam uh, fighting against the Vietnamese people who are also fighting the system. I say that what they're doing, the black men who go over there and fight, they're helping to tighten the yoke around their own necks and around the necks of their people. So that I don't think that any man uh, should uh, belong to an army or fight for a country that's uh, destroying him and his people. I say that uh, contrary to the propaganda of the pigs of the power structure, the Black Panther Party is a responsible organization, uh, not responsible to the pigs, but responsible to the people. That it was organized by our Minister of Defense, Huey P. Newton, and our Chairman, Bobby Seale, and has a program and a platform designed to cope with the problems facing black people in the black community. Uh, it's not a racist organization. Uh, I've been called by the National Review the Goebbels of uh, the Black Liberation Party, of, of the Black Panther Party. And all of this is uh, an attempt to undermine the party or to give it a bad uh, presentation to the public. That's right. And I say this, that the people in the area who have bothered to check out the party, I'm talking about white people, Mexican-American people, uh, American Indians, uh, Chinese people, they've checked this out, they've contrasted us with other organizations, and they enthusiastically uh, support us and associate with us, and we're very glad to be able to do that because we feel that we are making a constructive effort and that our program is designed to do something for the black people, and we feel the black people will support it and that the party will be able to make a significant contribution to progress and to the liberation of all people, this, including black people. This hearing has another question. Eldridge, I would like... Um you to ask Mr. Buckley if he can explain the format of the Molly Guire, you know, incident, that Irish group uh, that was formed in 1877 against the English? Um, if he under can. ordinary circumstances, I think that um, that would be a good question to put uh, uh, to one of the descendants of the Molly Maguire, you see? Mm -hmm. But this particular one, I would be reluctant to put any question to him because I'm quite sure that he's capable of twisting it in such a manner as to uh, turn it against you, or to turn it against whoever asked the question. Ask the question. So uh, Mr. Buckley, I might have proceeded as well. I was not asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do, uh, do you have a question, Mr. Edwards? We have only a minute uh, left. Uh, well, yes, I do, but it might take more than a minute. I guess it can't. Uh, in the University of California, Mr. Cleary, you uh, there's been quite a hassle there over recent months. Uh, you talked earlier about the press not representing it, and yet it seems all over the nation that uh, they're objecting the reason the students are supporting the university and the, the conflict is because uh, you're lecturing. Do you think this is the case, or is it uh, because of the way they tried to keep you from lecturing? I think that the students in this country, on the campuses all over this country, um, recognize that those who are in power in this country are in position to take control of the universities. Uh, they sit on the boards of regents, on the administrations, and they have turned the universities into weapons in the war, or the Cold War, or into the struggle uh, against uh, their enemies. And they're programming these people in a manner that they don't appreciate, and they're moving to get some student power so that they could have something to say about. Uh,